What is up guys, welcome Hello. back. In my last video I went over my approach to sculpting stylized stone and in this one I will go over how I textured this piece in Substance Painter. You can use this tutorial with your own projects or if you just want to follow along with my model you can grab all the project files on my Gumroad. Link will be in the description and it has everything you need to follow along as well as a Substance Painter smart material to use in any of your other projects. To start, I'm gonna create a new folder called stone and add a fill layer in there. I'm turning off all the layers except color and roughness and I will bring the roughness up to near white as I'm going to focus on my colors first and then later we will come back and we can tweak those roughness layers. Choosing a nice stone color now with a very small amount of saturation in the orange so it's not perfectly grayscale. And then we can duplicate this layer and call it base variation light. I'm just quickly going to add a black mask to my stone folder to isolate the bricks. Coming back to my base variation light layer, I'm bringing the value slider up. This will make it a bit brighter and then adding in a grunge map mask. I like to use this blotchy one most of the time as it has a nice balance of white and black for my masking. I'm adjusting the tiling of the grunge mask now to fit the mesh better and then adding on top of that every stylized artist's worst kept secret, the blur slope filter. Adjusting the opacity for the layer now, I will then duplicate it, rename it to base variation dark and change the blend mode to multiply. In the grunge mask settings, we can change the random seed so it doesn't sit perfectly on top of the lighter layer. And then once again, we're just going to adjust the opacity for this layer. Adding another fill layer, I will name this edge highlights. Add a bitmap mask using your big curvature map and a levels filter on top of that. Drag the sliders of the levels to isolate only the edges on your model. We can use the eyedropper tool to select the color from the variation light layer and then bring the color up a little bit more. Let's duplicate the edge highlights layer, rename the bottom highlight layer to edge highlights blurred and I will add a blur filter to the mask. I'm doing this so I can have a nice fall off from the edges while still being able to adjust the strength and sharpness of only the center point of the edges. We can now adjust the opacity of these layers to something you like. Adding another fill color layer, calling it Curvature Darken. This layer will be for all the little cracks and crevices. We are going to use the same technique as the edge highlights, a baked curvature as a mask with a levels layer, only this time we want to invert the levels before adjusting the slider. Now we can adjust the opacity and also add a blur filter on top of the mask so the mask edges aren't so harsh. Another day, another layer. Let's make a dark brown layer and add a bitmap mask with the baked ambient occlusion. Also using a levels filter on this one, we want to invert it and then adjust the slider to get a nice shadowing effect. Once again, we can bring down the opacity. Let's go back to the beginning of the stack where we made our light and dark base variations. I'm going to duplicate from the dark layer, renaming it to base color variation one and changing the blend mode back to normal. We can now add in more color variation to the model, changing the seed in the grunge mask for each new variation layer you create and playing with different colors and opacity levels until you get something that you like. Going back to the top of the stack, another dark fill layer called Gradient Dark. I will change the projection mode from UV to planar and using the gizmo, position it at the bottom of the model. Play with the hardness slider and the layer opacity to get a soft transition. We can start tweaking the roughness now, going back to the beginning of the stack and working our way up. You can cycle through your PBR channels using the C key to view your roughness values on the model. The way I approach this is to have recessed areas like cracks and crevices or areas on the model that might collect more dirt and dust, rougher or closer to white. 
and then areas that might rub off and become naturally polished like edges and corners a little less rough. We also want a bit of variation on the overall faces and I'm doing that through my color variation layers I created. At the end, I add a fill layer with only roughness activated and then find a grunge mask I like and this will be the final overall roughness variation layer. Creating a green seal layer below our gradient, we can use some smart masks to create a mossy effect. I like the moisture preset as this is generally where things would grow, but feel free to play around with the other presets and see what you can find. Let's move on to the metal chains, creating a new folder with a mask to isolate the chains and a fill layer with metallic, roughness and color values. I'm setting the metallic to around 0.8 and finding a nice metallic color. Let's duplicate off this layer and call it base variation. I'm only making one variation layer for the metal as the chains are quite small so it doesn't need so much breakup. Bringing up the roughness slider and brightening the color, we can then use the same masking technique with the grunge mask that we used for the stone. A layer now for the edge highlights using the baked curvature map and levels filter to isolate them and using a brighter color. A layer with the baked ambient occlusion as a mask, we can use a dark color. I will bring down the metallic to zero and the roughness closer to white. Adding a levels to the mask and inverting, and then finally playing with the sliders to get a nice shadowed effect. Add a final roughness variation layer, like we did with the stone, and using a grunge mask. Let's make another folder for the candles. I'm going to create a base layer, bring up the roughness a bit, and finding a waxy color. Duplicating for edge highlights, same method as before, brighter color, curvature mask, and a levels filter to control that mask. Lastly, a simple ambient occlusion layer, dark color, baked AO as a mask, and a levels filter. Adding another folder inside our candles folder now. For the wicks, a very basic fill layer with a dark color and high roughness, and we can mask out those meshes. Let's add some emission to the ends. If you don't have an emission channel enabled, you can enable it in the texture set settings by clicking the plus icon across from the channels text and selecting emission. Adding a layer for the burning tips with just color and emission enabled and finding a nice orange glow, we can manually paint in that mask. Let's make the flame, a new folder with a base fill layer. We need to enable the alpha blending shader for this. So under the shader settings, select PBR metal rough with alpha blending. And we can add an opacity channel now under our texture set settings. Set the color of our flame base layer to an orange one and bring down the opacity so it's almost invisible.
duplicate off of that now and enable emission and bring the opacity slider all the way up. We can get the emission and color value with the eyedropper tool from the top of the wick and adding in a black mask now, I'm painting in a flame. Let's duplicate that layer again, reduce the saturation in the color and emission to get a hotter white flame. I like to call this layer heat. Add a black mask and then paint in on the origin of the flame. And we can go back to our base layer now and bring the opacity all the way down. Let's add a final touch. Now I'm adding another folder called paint with a basic color fill layer and a high roughness. And then using some alphas I created in Photoshop of stylized cave paintings. You can drag and drop into the stencil slot in your brush properties and paint away. And there you go. This is how I approach texturing stylized stone in Substance Painter. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. You can check out some of my other videos for stylized art on my channel. And if you're feeling generous, consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. And with that said, I will see you in the next one.